What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Brad back with another video. This is another one of those videos from my everything you need to know studying with Nurse Bass series. Uh, this is going to be an educational video. As you can tell, we're going to be talking about cardiac blood flow. Uh, this is something that I find to be very important in understanding various cardiovascular diseases and it's important just to know the basic anatomy and the physiology of how the heart works. Now, as you can tell, I'm not the best artist in the world, but hopefully this basic diagram will suffice in giving you all the information necessary to understand cardiac blood flow, how blood flows through the heart, goes to the lungs, becomes oxygenated, comes back to the heart, and then gets pumped out to the body. Just to give you a little basic information to identify some uh, anatomical structures, we have the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, which I was unable to identify because I ran out of room. And then we have the left ventricle. Coming off of the right ventricle, we go up into the pulmonary arteries that lead to the lungs. And then from the left ventricle, we come up into the aorta, which branches off into the upper body and then to the lower body. We also have here the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava, which collect deoxygenated blood from the upper half and lower halves of the body and pour it into the right atrium to begin the cardiac blood flow. And we also have the pulmonary veins. If I haven't mentioned those, those bring the freshly oxygenated blood from the lungs, from the lungs into the left atrium and into the left ventricle to then be pumped throughout the body. Also other structures that I was not able to identify because I didn't want to uh, convolute this diagram any more than it already is. Right here, where the blood flows from the right atrium into the right ventricle, these two little flaps you see, there was, there's actually a third flap that I'm not able to draw. This is your tricuspid valve. Going from the right ventricle up into the pulmonary arteries, you have another valve. This is your pulmonic semilunar valve. As your blood comes into your left atrium and pours into your left ventricle, it passes through the bicuspid valve, also known as the mitral valve. And then when you go from the left atrium and up into the aorta, we have the aortic semilunar valve. Of course, you have the thick myocardium here of the heart, thicker on the left side than on the right side because your left ventricle is your main pump of the heart. And here you can sort of see what I attempted to draw, the interventricular septum. So now that we have all of the basic anatomical features out of the way, I want to go ahead and uh, give you guys the idea and describe to you how blood flows through the heart and throughout the body. So starting with deoxygenated blood, this is the way that I want to start. So we have blood that has already passed throughout the body and it's coming from the upper part of the body and the lower part of the body via the superior and inferior vena cava. Deoxygenated blood, also blood that is rich in carbon dioxide, the waste product, right? This blood comes from the superior and inferior vena cava and pours into your right atrium. From your right atrium, as you can see via these arrows, it passes through the tricuspid valve and into the right ventricle. The right ventricle contracts and forces blood through the uh, pulmonic semilunar valve and up into your pulmonary arteries. Now, in regards to the pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins, this is the only place in the body where it's sort of flip-flopped. Whenever we think about arteries or we think about veins, we think about arteries as carrying oxygenated blood away from the heart and to the body. And when we think about veins, we think about deoxygenated blood returning to the heart. And this is true in every case except for the pulmonary arteries and the pulmonary veins. The pulmonary arteries are still carrying blood away from the heart and towards the lungs, but instead it's carrying deoxygenated blood away from the heart and toward the lungs. And whenever the blood returns to the heart via the pulmonary veins, it's carrying oxygenated blood. That's just one little tidbit of information that you need to know in regards to the pulmonary arteries and veins. So anyways, the blood leaves the right ventricle and the heart via the pulmonary arteries to both the left lung and to the right lung. It is here in the lungs where uh, the blood becomes freshly oxygenated and the blood essentially gets rid of the waste product carbon dioxide into the lungs. That's why whenever you inhale, 
All of the blood that is passing through the vasculature within your lungs, oxygen diffuses into the blood. And you know, those nice little heme molecules on the erythrocytes, on the hemoglobin, they pick up the oxygen and then they dump off CO2. And so whenever you exhale, that's why you exhale carbon dioxide. Anyways, the blood goes into the lungs, becomes oxygenated, and then the blood returns uh, via the pulmonary veins. Two from the left lung, two from the right lung, and they pour back into the left ventricle. At this point, the blood is freshly oxygenated and it is ready to be delivered and distributed all throughout the, the body to the tissues and the cells that need this oxygen in order to survive. So our freshly oxygenated blood enters the left atria. It passes through the bicuspid valve or also known as the mitral valve and it passes into the left ventricle. Now the left ventricle is the main pump of the heart with this thickened myocardium and it contracts and it pumps blood through the aortic semilunar valve and up into the aorta. And from here, it passes into the upper body and it's behind the heart, you can't see, but this continues down to here and gets uh, distributing freshly oxygenated blood to the lower half of the body. And this is the cycle in which our heart goes through with every contraction. We are constantly delivering deoxygenated blood back into the heart to go back into the lungs to be oxygenated. And then it returns back via the pulmonary veins into the left atria, into the left ventricle. And then this freshly oxygenated blood gets delivered into the uh, into the tissues of the body. Now, one interesting thing here that I don't have depicted in this diagram, which I may do a separate video for entirely, is the coronary arteries, the, the vasculature of the heart itself. How does the heart itself actually get um, blood and you know perfused with the oxygen that it needs? Actually, right here on the base of the aorta, whenever it leaves the heart, right at the base of the aorta, are the uh, the coronary is where the coronary vasculature begins, and whenever this left ventricle contracts, it contracts with such a high amount of pressure that it bypasses these coronary arteries. Would actually be like right here at the base. It bypasses these things entirely because they're so tiny, and it just passes through the aorta. Right, the blood goes through the aorta, but once the left ventricle is finished contracting and it relaxes, it's almost like a vacuum type of effect where it sucks what blood is left in the aorta backwards. And once it's called a rebound, and once it rebounds, this blood, when the vacuum effect comes back, this is when the blood enters into the coronary vasculature and perfuses the actual tissues of the heart. That was just a little side note I wanted to throw in there. Something pretty interesting. I would suggest you maybe go further on your own and research that. That, But again, that might be something that I do a separate video for. So I know this video was real quick, but I just want to recap real quick for you guys so that you really get the full grasp of what's going on here. Again, blood, deoxygenated blood that is rich in waste, such as carbon dioxide exits the upper half and the lower half of the body via these massive veins, the superior and inferior vena cava, both come together and collect and dump into the right atrium. All of this deoxygenated blood that enters the right atrium passes through the tricuspid valve and into the right ventricle. Right ventricle contracts, shooting this deoxygenated blood through the pulmonic semilunar vein, uh, pulmonic semilunar valve into the pulmonary arteries. These uh, pulmonary arteries carry the deoxygenated blood into the left and the right lungs. The lungs, through the process of respiration, uh, trades off oxygen for carbon dioxide and sends freshly oxygenated blood back to the heart via the pulmonary veins, two from the left, two from the right, and pours this freshly oxygenated blood into the left atria. The left atrium then pushes, contracts and pushes the blood through the uh, bicuspid valve or the mitral valve into the left ventricle. Left ventricle contracts, shooting this blood through the aortic semilunar valve into the aorta to be distributed to the upper and to the lower halves of the body. 
And again, this cycle just repeats. So I really hope that you guys got some great information from this. I, again, I know that the drawing was sort of subpar, but hopefully it was a good demonstrative example of how blood flows through the heart, how blood becomes oxygenated and gets distributed to the tissues of your body. And also how waste is removed from the body as well. Uh, again, it's Nurse Bass. It's your boy, Brad. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. I'm putting out these videos every week, motivational material, educational material to help you guys succeed. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned for the ne next video next week. It's Nurse Bass soon to be.